Hello, this is part 8 of how to price an option using a binomial tree. Here we're looking at our third and final step of how to price or value an option. Here we're looking at two option features. Either it's a call or a put, or the other feature would be either the, um, the option is a European type or American type. Here we'll start to split on how they will work. So here the first one we'll look at a European call option first. This is our first uh, uh, option type to look at. Now, depends on what, how you asked or what you see in the question, uh, you, you need to look at these two features and see how they work. This is a European call, so I'm looking at applying this maximum of zero or S minus K if it's a European option, then I only look at the value of the call at the very end at step 4. So this is what I have done. So let me apply these four, uh, these, the, the, apply these two to these five steps, uh, these five nodes at step 4, and see what the value of the option is. So this is a call option. So I'm looking at the value of the option is the bigger of either 0 or S minus K. So let me look at this time note first. Let me use this. I'm looking at this. The stock price had moved up four times in a row and my S now is 146.4. So the stock price had moved up all four steps and now it's 146.4 my K is 110, so that's given. I can buy at 110 uh, for something that's worth 146.4 in the market. So my pure profit, if I exercise, would be 146.4 minus 110, which is $36.04. So this is the value of the option, given that scenario of the stock price moving up four times in a row. I move down to my second note. Here the stock price moved several ways, but at the end it's at 121. So here the value of the call if the stock price is 121 would be 11. So I buy something at 110, which is my strike, but the market value of this thing is 121. So I'm making $11 profit on the option if that is the stock price at that time. If in the third, I guess, fourth and fifth case, uh, these are the other possible stock price, but when we look, the market value is less than 110. So I can put in the formula 100 minus, I get a minus 10 here, so maximum of 0 or minus 10, we get 0. In this case, in these three nodes, what it means is you can buy something at 110, but the market price is less. So there's two things you can do. One is you let the option expire. You do not use it. You do not exercise it. It's more expensive to buy using the option, so why use it? The other would be if you really want to buy it, you still will not use the option. You go to the market and buy at 100 or 82 or 63. It's cheaper in the market, so you buy it from there. So in these three bottom notes in the call case, call option case, you do not exercise here and you get a zero profit. So at the end, this is what I have. 36.4, 11, 0, 0, 0 is from our previous step. Uh, to make it cleaner, I just took out the formula, so I just put in a 36.4, 11, 0, 0, 0, into our next thing. So I finish the first step of looking at how much the price is, uh, for the uh, what's the value of the option at the very end of the steps. Uh, the next step we need to do is to find the P. So given what we have, we have 
In this case, assuming it's a stock with no dividend, we use e to the power rt minus d over u minus d, and we get 5.55 or 0.5255 as p, and our 1 minus p is 0.4745.